tell me how it was like raising your prices and basically breaking your business then, man. So I thought I had it all figured out, like talking to you for even just a little bit. Cause I remember you had hit me up saying like, Hey, when, when are you going to raise your prices to 60? And I, like me personally, I kind of took that as, Oh, damn, this dude thinks like my, my work. Is so, um, I kept seeing like all these things saying like, know your worth. And like, I, I got my head wrapped up into that whole thing. So I raised my prices to 60 from 45. And then that was, and that, like, was bu- that was, that was like before we started working together. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That was before I joined. Did I really tell you that? I don't, I don't think, I don't think I told you that. Did I? You, you asked that was, was like your first engagement with me ever was like when, like, are you going to be ra- or like, when are you raising your price? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, like, like more like, okay, like, what, what, what's your plan almost, right? Yeah, because like, I mean, like most people, they don't have a plan, and it's just like, all right, I mean, do you, like, what, what's your plan for this? And it's just kind of like, I don't know. Um, so you took that, like, when, when I when I told you that, like, basically, you're like, oh shit, okay, I should raise prices. For for the most part, okay, that was my thinking. Like, oh, this dude thinks my work is worth that, so. Did we, did we ever hop on a, was this, was, so was, was this before we hopped on a call even, or what, what was this? Yeah, we, we hadn't hopped on a call at all. Okay. We had just like DM'd a couple of times on okay. Instagram. That was it. Okay. So like you raised prices. I mean, did you just like, like, well, first of all, like, what was happening at 40? Like, like, cause I, I know the business, what was going on at 40, but like, what was actually like, like your mentality and like, how were you feeling at the $40 price point? Were you even like had a good business at all? No, dude. I just like. To be honest, at 40, it was all, like, pride and ego. Mm. I thought I was the shit, so... Like, like what do you mean, like, like what yeah. do you mean, like, by the shit, like, um... So I think there's a lot of barbers that are like that, too, dude. Like, um, I mean, I, I talk to you guys about that in the program a lot. Like, like, um, people who will be thinking they don't need help. Like, what what did that mean to you about pride and ego? Or, like, what, what did that correlate? How did that, like, show up in the business for you? Um... I would say I based off, I based like what my price point should be off of like what I felt it should be and not what the business told me it should be. Oh, uh, so like, like if you were like, fuck, I, I feel like it's charged like 60 or a hundred, like you would have done that. Yeah. Facts. Okay. 100%. Yeah, Cause I, I know, I know. What was it? So you, I, I know prior, like, like you were at 40, but things weren't working well and you were at like 20 and you, like, you raised up to 40 because like you thought that would gain you more clients, correct? Yeah. So I had literally reached out to somebody that like, you know, having like just started coming out of the Marine Corps, starting in the industry, like this dude looked like he had his, his stuff together. So I asked like, Hey bro, like I'm not getting clients. I'm like, I need to, like, start making money doing this. Otherwise, I'm going to have to. And he was just like, yeah, you should raise your prices to 45 instead of 20 so people take you more serious. And it worked for a little bit. Mm. But that was, like, the beginning of COVID when tons of people were looking for barbers. Sure. And I kind of took advantage of that. Sure, sure. So, so- yeah, and then... Go ahead. Well, it, it wasn't, it wasn't even like more like in, in your audio is breaking up a little bit too, but it's all good. Um, so that's why I'm like, kind of like jumping in a little bit, but like, so you did this during COVID. Of course, like a lot of people were looking for barbers and it's just like low key stuff too, right? Like you weren't like marketing it. Like, of course you, were you cutting a barber shop or was it just like super low key at like a low key spot? I'm guessing. I, no, I, I was in a, I was in a shop just like at night time cause I was still okay. in school. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like, so like, like again, too, like it wasn't like something that, uh, you know, it was like broad daylight type thing. Like it was like, all right, cool. Give me 40 bucks. I'll get your haircut in. Got some clients off that. When, when did you notice things start slowing down for you after that? Um, or did they, honest did they, when I went, down? when I, they, they didn't slow down until I went up to 60. Mm. And when I went up to 60, and I stopped seeing a lot of the people that I was seeing and I stopped getting like new clients. I was just getting new clients off of people finding me on Booksy. Sure. And 
yeah, once I stopped, like, seeing new clients and, like, a lot of people stopped coming, I was like, oh, fuck. I messed something up. Well, like, here. like, 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 give us, give us an idea. Like, like, how, how many clients were you doing it? Like, maybe per week at forty, and how many clients all when you went up to sixty? Did you, were you doing per week at that point in time? I was doing like maybe fifteen to twenty clients a week at forty at, bucks at at the forty. Yeah. Re- and you, okay, so you, I mean, you didn't really have a good because like that's like even fifty percent of like what I would think is like a decent business. I mean, but, but you, this is also like you're doing late night cuts. Like to you, this is this is not this is probably like full capacity. And then you decided to go up to sixty based off the fifteen to twenty. And how many people were you seeing per week uh, once you went to sixty? Like five. Okay. And how how many new how many new clients would you say you were getting like like maybe per month at sixty bucks? At sixty zero. Really. At forty, I was I was getting probably like six to seven a month. Sure. Sure. That's not bad, but like you saw a steep decline and how long did you, how long did you like bite the bullet for at 60 bucks? I think once you joined the program, like you were still at 60 for a little while or did we shoot you back down? Kind of give me like a, a, a playback of that. Uh, so I felt like after joining the program and like being on the Q and A calls and seeing mm. how much of a handle people had on their business. I started to like second guess myself and be like, oh shoot, like maybe I shouldn't have gone up to mm. 60 and like maybe I should have waited and like, like had a, a plan almost. And then once I started watching the modules, I was like, oh shit, I really did. So like I didn't just write at all. I had no proof of concept even at 40. Sure. Like for bringing in a new client. So. Yeah, it was really just like the Q and A calls and the modules. I was like, "Damn, I messed up. I, I, I shouldn't have." Up. So I started to second guess it, and sure. then I had. I think I asked you just on the Q and A call, "Hey, like, do you think I should go go back down to to forty five? And um, you asked a couple questions, and it ended up being like, "Yeah, bro, like, yeah. you need to go okay. back down to forty five. How, how long did you stay at sixty? And then I wasn't getting new clients. What was that? How long did you stay at 64? I don't even think a month. Really? Yeah. I think it was just like I had gone up and I think like a week or so later I joined the program. Mm. And then, yeah, very soon after I went back down to 45. And then you, then you said like you still weren't getting new clients even at the $45 price point? Yeah, even like I, I had reached out to my old clients when yeah. I was cutting at forty five that dropped off when I went to sixty. And like some some clients came back but not very many getting new clients in. This was like two months into posting. And I was like, Yeah, like I started to get like really, really nervous and then I mean I got maybe one or two off of Instagram like maybe five months in and I was like yeah like something's off and I kept reaching out to you like hey I need to I think I need to go back down like go down even more yeah but you were like no dude like like just don't be fidgety yeah and the thing was I had never told you I never had a proof of concept yeah. at any price point yeah I, I remember that so you were like you're like oh fuck dude yeah and like like for anybody like a proof of concept is basically just like you know, you, you need to you need to validate like that price point like is not only you you get clients at that price point but also to like you know the the business is like in a healthy position to scale and like basically like you like after learning all the numbers of like what we have to like track and everything like and, and this this went all the way back to like what when you were at twenty bucks I think I remember like you, I, I remember I remember this call I, I do remember this call that we're on and you told me this and I was like whoa whoa, whoa. so si- since we were at twenty bucks we never had a fucking proof of concept on the business and you've just been raising prices randomly this whole time right. I'm like no fucking no fucking wonder this thing happened to where it's like you went up you lost everything and then we go back down and shit's still not working like it was just never built properly, um, well like let's let's kind of tail back like because I, I think also too like like that was a big thing like breaking this obviously like you're at you just raised it up to sixty like we finally got you up to sixty bucks successfully now right so like we're we'll, we'll touch on that part but like um, I think another big big shift for you was even joining the program in the first place. Um, 
And like, because like we had a call at first, like I, t- I spoke to you um, and I think you left that call thinking you could just do it on your own, correct? Like that, that was the vibe that I got at least. Um, yeah, I, I would say that. And also like I legitimately didn't have the money at the mm. time. So um, it was like a mixture of the both because I was still kind of like skeptical. I was talking sure. to like people that I knew about it and they're like, bro, like you don't want to get scammed. And I just, I sat with it for like two weeks and I was actually getting like a lump sum of money from sure. um, like getting out. This thing's probably going to change your life. So like you might as well just do it. And we got on another call and I joined that second call that, that I got on yeah, with you. you. You know what, you know what I remember um, really like vividly too about like that. I, I think I remember like, Cause you, you hopped off the first call and then I, I just remember getting the vibe like, yeah, he, like he thinks he can do this on his own. Cause I remember I saw you like, you're trying to do what other people in the business in like the, the program we're doing. I'm like, all right, he's one of those people. Like we'll see how long this lasts. And I think I just remember getting a message from you. You were like, Hey, what happens? Like if I lose all my clients, like what, what should I do? Right. Or you gave, you gave me something, you were trying to get some type of advice out of me. I, I remember that like. I'm like, oh, he's really one of these people. It's yep. like he did. He's trying to do it on his own, and then he fucks up, and then he's now he's trying to get free advice. And I just told you straight, like, Joe, I'm not, I can't give you free advice unless you're in the program. And I think you were just like, fuck it, let's do it, right? I think that's that's how yep. that's that's how it went down. Then we just hopped on a call real quick, got you onboarded. Um, well, what, where did that decision making process come from? Because like, like, man, like like you 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 try to do shit on your own, right? And then you kind of you kind of kept on doing what you were doing. Like, where, where did that even come from? Like, cause I know we talked about like you, the evolution of a businessman, right. To who you are now, to where you're successfully like at 60, we're looking to get you up at 80 in another couple months. Like what was that difference? Like for, from then to versus now for you that you can, that you can at least pinpoint. Well, so like at least during the, the period from like that first call I had with you to the, the second call where I actually joined, I had like, I had been out of the Marine Corps for not that long. Sure. And like, as I was getting out of the Marine Corps, I was like, I was working with this company for getting like pretty much being able to get a job doing the same thing I was doing in the Marine Corps or just out in the civilian world. And I had like, I had job offers that uh, were like six figures plus and I was kind of like sitting and thinking, like, do like what route do I take? Yeah, well, why didn't why did you do go that? Why didn't you go, why did you do that instead of being a barber? Like, why why didn't you do that at all? What was that decision process for you? Because I was so miserable in the Marine Corps doing. Mm-hmm. I didn't enjoy. It. Like, I'd rather do something that I actually enjoy doing. And I'll actually give a shit about to scale. And like, that's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to stick. Yeah, it was pretty much I'm, I'm going to stick to the thing that I like. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's probably going to be way, way less uh, friction than uh, if I were to have done I was just it's like, I need to stick with the thing that I, that I actually care about. Sure, sure. So like, so. Um, so you stuck, you stuck with barbering, and then, and then, I mean, the decision making process again too to like, to like, uh, I guess, not go with the program versus going with the program. Where were you going with that again? Uh, I think this was something we found out was a problem. Even once I did join the program, but I was. I was looking for other people to give me the go ahead rather than relying on myself to give myself the, the go ahead and like actually trust myself and take a chance on myself. So like so you were like, like what were you, were you, were you t- waiting for me or were you waiting for somebody else? To, like somebody else to, like outside of yourself and outside of me to be like, yeah, do it. Yeah, pretty much. Why? Like fr- I, I, I didn't trust myself. I didn't trust that I could make the right decision. Hmm. Well, like, I mean, I think, I think a lot of people too, like, what, like, cause as a business owner, that, that's what it's about. And like, you know that now business is about taking risk and like calculated risk. And it's like, I mean, I can, I can get like, you know, 
if it's like something that you've never heard of or anything, something like that that you're trying to invest in. But like, you know, I think a lot of people are like, man, they're so, they're, they're so scared of making like the move to like, you know, invest in their education. And it's like, even if you learn like one fucking thing, I, I think I, I think I, I talked about this in the last Q and A call, didn't I? On, on, what was it yesterday? Were you on yesterday's Q and A call? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember you, yeah. you said, yeah. Even if you only learn one Just thing one from thing. a program you joined, like, that's yep, like, it's, it's, it's a gem. Like it, 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 yep. one thing can like get me ahead, like, like cut my uh, learning experience by five years and I'll take that all day. I will pay money like to be able to, sk- to skip like that time learning frame process no matter what. And everybody's always out here like, oh, you can just do it on your own. You do this. It's like, dude, you can, but like, man, it's going to take a fucking long time, right? So for you, you were almost like trying to get validation from somebody else to say like, yeah, do it. So, I mean, like, is, is that so you could blame somebody else that if it didn't work out or like, did you not trust yourself of like, if you could make it work or where did that come from? I, I want to say it was like, uh, the biggest thing was just trust. Oh. And then, yeah, I, now that I look at it, I was definitely looking for a way to like, if this doesn't work, I can pawn it off on somebody else. Yeah. Instead of that's, like, that's... Take responsibility yeah. for my, yeah. You know? I mean like that's, that's yeah. most people too. Like, do if you look at most people in the world? I mean like, just look at the fucking barbershop like industry or barber industry in general. Like Look, you go into a barbershop, most people are like that. They're, they want to point them, oh, see, like, this didn't work out. This person didn't, oh, this person didn't show up. Oh, it's this person's fault. Like, and I think this trickles down to how barbers make decisions. Just people in general make decisions. And, like, I think for you, that's, I mean, like, again, too, I, I stress, like, really big on, like, hey, you got to be able to think very clearly on, like, how to, how to, like, scale the business forward and, like, have to understand, like, what's holding you back. I think that was, like, man, just even thinking properly on, like, making decisions. I know we talked about that, too, in terms of trusting yourself. I have that on my, like on my notes right here of like trust your decision making. So like what, what, where else like for yourself, obviously like, you know, you, you can make one decision, but this thing is like, I think what most people forget is like, this probably also pops up in other areas of life. Like where else did you find yourself at least in the business, not trusting yourself? Like even once you got in the program. Uh, I would say even with just getting momentum on Instagram, Mm. like to even, allow like people to be seeing my content to even get a new client i didn't trust that like i had the ability to even do that yeah yeah i remember i remember a lot of those early calls it was just a lot of like i I mean it it was it was like not even the tactical stuff it was more like the like like simple like decision making on like yes do this no don't do this yes do this yes keep going with this right and i just remember you would always ask hey i just want to check my thinking all the damn time and it's just like over and over and over again until like you got to a place where now you can like self-sustain the business and also grow the business on your own. Cause now you know how to make a decision to grow to like as a businessman overall. Yeah, that like, I think there was probably like a month period where like every day, multiple times a day, I was like, Hey, like just wanting to yeah. check my thinking. Well, like, like, it like, was, I don't think it's bad, man. Like, like, you know, cause like you, you came from the Marine Corps. I mean, like, that's no, there's no business in there, right? Like they don't teach business. I mean, it, most, it, 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 everybody is a barber has, has zero clue of how to run a business. And because they are a barber, if they did know how to run a business, they'd be doing something else. They realize like, it's probably not the best business decision, but you're here anyways, right? You might as well make it work and you can actually make it very profitable if you know what you're doing. So like, w- give me like, I mean, where did you learn? Like, I guess ideas of like how to run a business prior. Was it just like from, like, you know, the military, was it family? Was it like clients? Like where, where'd you learn all this shit from that did not work? Obviously. Damn. Uh, I guess just from like, like old heads in the industry that like mm. I thought had it all figured out. Cause like from the outside looking in, it looks like, like, I don't know, just certain people, it looks like, damn, like they got it, you know, they got yeah, the, yeah. the secret, the secret, uh, the secret formula. And so I would just ask those people and the people that like, um, cause I mean, the Marine Corps drilled into my head, like if you're lazy, like don't listen to lazy people. Like you want to find the, the workhorses and like learn from them. Sure. So that's sure. kind of what I did. Yeah. That makes that, sense. That's a double edged sword. Cause it's good to have a work ethic, but I mean like as, yeah. as a barber, most, most, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't even say barbers have work ethics. They just know how to like 
walk on a treadmill, right? Like the redundant treadmill over and over again, right? And they just, just know how to wake up and do the same thing every fucking day. Um, but that makes sense. I think a lot of people, like, I mean, I remember when I first came in the industry, like, you just, man, you don't know who the fuck to believe sometimes, honestly. Instagram makes it so, like, hard to, like, is it, like, because people could, people could show whatever the fuck they want to show to make it look like they're doing something really great. But behind closed doors, what are they really doing? And most people hide that. And it's just like, man, like, you, it, it gets very hard to, to decipher the doers versus the talkers. And there's a lot of talkers. And I think, I think a lot of people, like, just need to be able to look at, like, I mean, like, that's why I always just focus on the program with you guys. Like, look, just fucking, like, get the result. We just want to be results driven. This is what we do. And that way other people can make their decision based off that, not, like, based off what I have to say. And I think that probably helped you out to make a decision. Also, like, you know, also give yourself some confidence to actually trust yourself to, like, put, like, what we're doing actually works, too. Once you, once you were inside the program, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I think the... Uh the biggest thing with like even starting to trust myself was like, honestly, you had started to give me like a little bit of reinforcement when I did do something right. Hmm. And I was like, okay, like, let me pay attention to this or like really, you know, study and figure out this thing that I did right. So I can keep doing it. Sure. Sure. Well, like, like, let's like, like let's go back into like how, how you got into barbering. Right. Cause like, all right, you were doing the military, like you were doing that. Like, when did you even start cutting hair? So I started in, I want to say it was 2018. And it was when I went to Japan. I went to Japan for like six months. Because um, like uh, the base that I went to is like undermanned. Hmm. So they send like Marines from other bases to go help out on this base. So I got sent over there for six months months and the money that I was making like through my paycheck I didn't want to use it when I would go out so I started cutting hair just as a a way to like make some extra money sure and um and like spend that money when I went out versus like my paycheck so you kind of start off like a side hustle like just some side money type thing like I mean when did you realize like you even wanted to be a barber and like go to barber school and all that shit um, so it was in Japan and I looked forward to Sundays and cutting people's hair. So I was like, you know what, like I'll stick with this thing. Like when I get back to the States and I started working in a barber shop, like as soon as like a week after getting back from hmm. Japan and that's where like, yeah, that's where. I like really started to enjoy it. And then I started seeing people on like Instagram, um, like raising prices. And I think I saw like Zay first, Mm. but I saw like, I came across almost everybody in the rich barber. And I was like, you know what? Like I want to give that a try at some point. Sure. And I feel like that started like in my brain, I was looking for a way to be able to do that. And, um, like my brain that the second call that we had that I actually joined, my brain correlated the two, like you want to, this is where you want to go. Yeah. And this is your answer. Like, let's connect the dots and just like do the thing. Why was that so hard for you to even come to like, why did it take you two calls or like that long of a time to like, to make that connection though? Like what, what was, what was like the thing that like was blocking that? lack of trust in myself it just it just comes back to lack of, where did the lack of trust even stem from dude uh to be a thousand percent honest probably my childhood really yeah just like uh like promises not being kept mm. um as like when i was a kid so Like, I mean, you say it all the time. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if I can't trust another, you know, another human, like, how can I trust myself? Sure, sure. And, like, Uh, also, too, like, like the personal problems bleed into the business. I think a lot of people forget about that. Like, I mean, that's very evident with you. Like, you you had everything, but yet, like, I mean, we took a long fucking time just to even get to this position where we could actually scale the business up. Like, for you, like, what was going, like... What was going through your mind? Like, okay, you got in the program and like now you have like stuff, but it's not really like working out in your favor. Like you're not really getting the growth that you're seeing. You're kind of coming up against some resistance. Like what was kind of going through your head the whole time? Um, 
so I'll be like, there were times that I wanted to be like, oh, screw this. Like, I'll just go work for, um, like one of the good job offers I had was for Tesla. Really? So like there were times, yeah, there were times that I was like, damn, like maybe I just go work for Tesla and make 150 K a year. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of people would take that too, man. Like what, what, what happened? I lit, dude, I would literally just look at like, I would look at Joel, I would look at tough and I'd be like, dude, there is no difference between you and them. Like they bleed, like we all have a brain. Yeah. We all bleed. We all put our pants on the same way. Like there has to be something that you are doing different that they are not doing that's Mm. stopping you from getting the result. And I like, I was I was just determined to figure out like what that that thing was and like h- how to actually get to like sure get to like even where they're at. Sure. So. Well, like, like here's here's an important question because like I, I mean obviously we talked about this on the Q and A calls. I just dropped a YouTube video like talking about this topic, right? Because like a lot of people would give up if it's not fucking working for them. They'll be like, oh man, like oh it's give up. It's not gonna work. Oh man, this this thing doesn't work for me, and they'll be like you know, be a little fucking shithead, right? But like you, like instead, you had like, there was a why there. There was something that was a driving force that wouldn't allow you to give up. Like you're trying to get towards something, the vision wise. Like what, what, what is that thing for you? What are you actually trying to get to? Like while through barbering? Cause like most people, they'll just see, they'll just say, oh man, like, you know, 20K, I'll, I'll, I'm fine where I'm at. I like to call it the revert back to fine. But you had those moments and yet you continue to push forward. So what was like that thing? Uh... I would, I would definitely say it was two things. So like, I have like a legit fear of being average. Yeah. That like, yeah. But why that? Though? Like, makes... like, cause like a lot of people, they can say that, right? I think a lot of barbers, they, they like to say a lot of shit. Oh, I don't want to be like, I, I remember when I was on calls. Oh man, I just want to make 20 K. Cause like, who, why would I what, not want to say the where I'm at? Like, why wouldn't you? It's so easy. Stay where you're at, right? Like, why wouldn't you want to be average? Stay where you're at. Like, what, what was, what, why, why were you afraid of staying average? What was the worst thing in mentally? What was, what was bad about it? Um, I think I just correlated it with like my upbringing and I like, um, So it was like the the fear of like being average and also like being poor and mm. like living like a the like that lifestyle like it just made me so like it just made me angry like seeing like people just settle for um for like average dude like that that's really like the only way that I feel I can like put it into words is like that. It just like it legit like I'm getting angry yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. It 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 just yeah, it just makes me angry that people will like settle and not actually strive to like live out what they feel they deserve. A lot of people feel like they deserve better, I but not everybody yeah. will go out on a limb to chase that better lifestyle. I don't even think, I mean, we talked about this. I don't think a lot of people allow themselves to like deserve something, right? A lot of people, I mean, I used to be like that. I used to be like, oh man, you know, I, I, I just, I just need like comfortable life or I just need this, I just need something simple. Like they don't even allow themselves to dream or like, man, like, I, mean, I don't remember, I, I don't think you were like that on our call, but like, I remember when I used to do the calls on board barbers, like, I just be like, all right, what do you want to do? Oh man, they make like 3K. Oh man, I just want to make like 5K. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, like what the fuck? What five k? Like I, I get that's more than what you're making right now, but, but like what the fuck are you doing? Like that's not like like once you have a mortgage, like let's say you have two kids, you have a wife, now you have a family, house, two cars, you have all the fucking food, all the bills. Is that really gonna like make? Is that really gonna allow you to save money in the bank, or is that gonna make you living on the edge? And like people don't think about these things either, right? Like. Did you, I mean, like, for your upbringing, like, seeing people be average, did you see, like, a lot of people, like, struggling or, like, making mistakes because they kept themselves average? Was that, was that, like, the thing that, like, maybe, like, was a trigger for you that you saw, like, why you never wanted to be average or you're afraid of being average? Yeah, so, to be honest, like, I think as a kid, I realized, like, I remember in, like, 
I want to say it was like early middle school. Sure. I had like, I had told my mom one time, like, hey, mom, you say you struggle with money, but like, you're still smoking cigarettes. You buy cartons of cigarettes. Yeah. And like, I think that's, uh, that's something that made me realize, like, damn, like, this is kind of like self inflicted, you know? Mm. And, yeah, I was just like, I can't, I can't do that. I can't, I yeah. cannot live my life like that. And I saw how stressed out, like, like living, living in like that type of environment. I just saw how stressed out the people were yeah, and like how unhappy with life people were. Well, I, and I was able to tell the difference between like, okay, like this person is, is making nothing or like living off of boot stamps and then like, I'm around, you know, people who, who may even, who may only be like middle class and like they're way happier. Sure, sure. I mean, I think even some, dude, some people like, they'll see that or they grow up around that and they, they're like, oh man, like that's easy life, right? They don't, they, they're like, oh, like all my needs met. Like, dude, I mean, like I've, I've talked to some barbers who are like making like zero, like zero at the end of the month. They like, like you said, spending all their money. I mean, not smoking cigarettes, spending money on weed, alcohol, shit. I remember there was like kids that were like fucking buying just like cars just to flex for no reason or like clothes and all this shit. I'm like, what's the fucking reason? <laughs> you're making all this money and you're not making progress on your life, especially if you're young. Like look at all these OGs that are in the industry. Like a lot of them are still cutting hair and that's not a good thing. Like you probably should not be like 15 years in the game, still cutting hair. Like, you should probably be, like, five years in and then dip the fuck out because you made your money and then, like, you can go on to the next thing. Like, even if you like cutting hair, I, I don't – and I don't, I don't know if, like, that's, that's you because I don't know what, exactly what you want to do, Anthony. But, like, I think everybody should have a five-year plan. Like, at five years, I don't have to cut hair anymore. But most people, they'll, they'll prepare themselves to just – they don't prepare themselves at all. So they're, they're, they're a barber for life. Um, and that's kind of who you were learning from under, too, like, at first, right, with those type of barbers. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. That. Yeah. Or like, yeah, because like some, somebody that I like really looked up to like recently like announced that they were going to retire mm. and then like took it back. And I like I saw that and that that was recently and I saw that and I was like, damn, like when I make that announcement, yeah. like I'm done. Yeah. Like there, there is no taking that. Yeah. That you, you don't, you, like, you don't, done. you don't want to be that guy that announced the retirement. Oh, just kidding. I'm back. And then like still cutting hair, like always flip flop. You never want to do that. Cause it's like, dude, like get the fuck out. That means you, you, you didn't prepare yourself financially properly or like, you know, you just, you, you're, you're making dumb decisions. You're making like very, I don't know. I, I see barbers say that a lot. Like they'll, they'll want to walk away cause they're bored or like something else is like, what are you going to do? They don't really know. Or like, they're trying to like do something else, but they don't have like financially, they're not in the proper place. I'm like, man, you gotta, you gotta put yourself in a proper place first and then go, go move on to the next thing. Um, I guess for you, like, like, cause right now, obviously like you're in a position, you're a totally different businessman. Like what's, what's the, what's the biggest difference that you see in yourself from like Anthony right now who just raised up to, to 60 bucks, right? We just had that price raise to versus when you were come, coming into the program and you'd raise prices up to 60 prior but you did it terribly wrong. Everything was like breaking. No, there no new clients, um, and you were like really struggling. What's the biggest difference that you see in yourself? I would just say the ability to trust myself, and then like that comes with like trusting myself to make decisions on my own. Because I remember for a long, a long, long time, I just kept like I was looking for like validation from you. Like, yes, post this, yes, post that, yeah. or like, yes, this is a good cover, yes, this is an, a, a bad cover, and like, once I started to see, like, or like, um, trust myself to, like, leave the nipple is kind of how, like, <laughs> yeah. I explained it to yeah. myself, like, yeah. I was like, damn, dude, like, you can trust yourself, you can, yeah. like, make legit decisions on your own to be able to like progress business you just you i just needed to get my thinking like headed in the correct direction yeah because then i was able to once once i trusted myself i was able to like look at things which is what you were telling me to do the whole time like, yeah dude just like 
the stuff that's working, like keep repeating it. Yeah. The stuff that's not working, like do away yeah. with it. And I just that never clicked. Yeah. It never clicked. Yeah. You like you had everything in front of you. I think the same the thing too is like, man, like you actually started getting results. Like you started getting more new clients you ever gotten in, like per month in like your career. I think you you had a couple you had a lot of months back to back to back where you made the most amount of money, like whether per week, per month, whatever that may be, that you had ever made in your career, like after joining the program. I think that once you start seeing results and like you see that like, oh shit, I I made a change in the business and it's working. And like, also I know how to get to like a hundred bucks or wherever I want to go because I know like I can trust the advice. Holy fuck. I just need to fucking execute this thing. Right. And that kind of builds on top of itself to where you're like, okay, I can just focus on this. And I'm good. I, I, I see that same thing with like Paco. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, Paco, like he had that same like type of transformation. I think uh, Greg had the same type of transformation. I think everybody that comes through, through and like just in work is working with us. Like, they go through a point of where like, oh, okay, we'll try this out. So then once they start seeing the results, like boom, full, full on go. Um, I guess for you, like, like for now, like what is like your plan? Like, what do you got plan going on? Like, or what's the next steps of like what you're looking to do in like your career and like uh, kind of give us a foreshadowing for like the next year of what you got planned. Uh, so, uh, by the end of the year, I plan to be at a hundred. Mm. That's like, um, the goal and like, I set a goal for myself that before I leave the industry, I'd like to charge a thousand dollars for like basic haircut, not haircut and beard, but basic haircut. So, um, yeah, everything that like, yeah, that, that's what I, that's what I strongly desire to do before I leave this industry. Cause, um, yeah, that's just what I want to do. And I think, um, to be honest with you, I, I think like a part of the reason why I set a goal like, you know, that high or what seems like super high to, to some people is honestly because of you. Like, you kind of like drove that the concept of being like the best at what you do. And I feel like, in my eyes, if I can make it to there, like I'm top dog in the industry. Nobody's like, nobody can touch me. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's like, that's, that's my vision. That's what I have like playing in the back of my head, like thousand dollars a cut, thousand dollars a cut. And, mm. um, but what does that mean to you? Cause I think a lot of people will have like, and we can go back to the, the why, right? Like a lot of people will say that, oh, I want to charge a thousand bucks. I want to make 20 K. What's the real why? Like what, what, what is it about like charging that much that really like, cause there's something that lights your soul on fire about that, right? Just, yeah, I don't think I've really thought about that. It just, that just makes me like thinking about that and thinking like I have, I have like a, a condo. I, like picked out in this building in in San Diego that like I don't know I just have like a whole vision for it and when I like when I visualize this thing it's like an energy source for me sure you you, so, you, you have somewhere where you want to go in life you have like a vision you have like yeah. a, something like I, I, like because I think what most people do and like a lot of barbers they'll say they just want to make twenty k or they want to charge whatever amount just for that reason and they're not they're never gonna get there it's just like it's like you right now saying that you want to make a billion dollars, right? Or like you want to be like, you want to be the world's richest man, the, the richest man in the world. There's like no reason behind it, right? There's nothing that's tied to you. But you have like something, a reason, like a vision for yourself, the space you want to like live in. This is like your ideal life. And it's all tied to if I charge $1,000, I can then do this thing, right? Yes, 100%. Yeah. That's, that's what's important. And I think a lot of people like miss that too. So like, I, I think as long as you always like keep that, like you'll be straight. Now, I guess, like, to kind of, like, start wrapping this up, like, for you, like, what what's, like, the one piece of advice you would give some other barber, or, like, maybe yourself back then uh, when you didn't join the program? What's one piece of advice you would give them, like, right now? I would just say, like, don't be afraid to ever, like, take a chance on yourself mm-hmm. and, like, invest into, um, invest into your, like, your education because like I know it it sounds like super cliche that like to hear the quote oh knowledge is power but like if you take something that like 
somebody is giving you who's done what you're trying to do and you apply it, like there's no limit to what can be done really. Yeah. So I, I would just, yeah, I would just say like, take a chance on yourself and like, don't be afraid to invest either. Cause when I, when I came into the program, the way I looked at it is I bought five years of your life. Yeah. And like that 10 X the results that I could get that like for what took you five years. So yeah. like, just that investment into self is the best possible thing that you could do. Yeah. Well, was this like the biggest purchase like you made outside of like maybe barber school even? Like for your barbering career? So I didn't even pay for barber school. The, <laughs> this, the this, military did. Dude. So, this, so this, this was the biggest biggest yeah. purchase I've ever made. Like, yeah. How, how, did, Other, it feel, how like, did that How did that feel at least like making that type of decision then? Like, like, obviously you said no at first you didn't have, like, the overall investment. And then, like, at least making it, how did you feel, like, during the process? Like, were you nervous? Were you scared? Were you like, fuck, 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 fuck? Like. I was definitely nervous because of definitely the whole trust thing. Mm. I didn't trust that I made the proper decision. Really? Yeah. Mm. And that, like. I think what I understand now is that had nothing to do with like you or your program that yeah. had everything to do it, with it, myself. It is. It's always like with the person. And yeah. Yeah. So like, um, yeah, being able to like take that good hard look in the mirror and be like, dude, you're the fucking problem. Yeah. Like <laughs> nobody else around you is the problem, but yeah. You. Yeah. Well, I think also too, like it, it, it now opens you up to like, dude, now you don't have a problem. Like, investing that type of money into something else like because you've seen a, a positive feedback loop on it because you've done the work and it's like i remember like the first purchase i made like that like after that first one i mean i, I told you guys like what was it at the end of uh last year i made i made like a for education wise i made a uh, one-time payment of like 50k right for just for years like um access to a mentorship program and like dude my, myself like where i was you're at i would have never thought i'd like what 50k i would never drop that all at once right but like it, these things like build up as you have like more and more positive like cases of like investing yourself. And I, I would just continue saying even for you, dude. Like you should always be looking at like what's the next highest thing like that's gonna help me. And obviously, like don't pay for something just because it's expensive. But obviously, like like con- you should always be continuing to like climb the ladder of investments and like paying into like things that like will get you to the next level overall. I think it's like one of the most. That's at least for me. I I, I know intuitively or like I know that as a byproduct of what we do with the program, that's also going to happen like with all the barbers. Cause like they all start realizing, Oh shit. Like, you know, I mean like most of us never invested in families, never invested in like education wise like that. It's like, Oh shit. This is, this is like what happens when you actually like put into yourself. I get this type of output. Where else can I apply this to? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think even just coming to the conclusion that like when you do buy like, something that is legitimately worth the money like you're literally buying years of somebody's yeah. life like yeah. i think the 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 program that you were talking about you said that like it took homeboy like 10 years or something like that 10 years plus to get to yeah to you know where where he was so you literally bought 10 years of that, that dude's life to probably do it and whatever Whatever it is that you look to get out of that, you're probably going to do it in like two to five years. No, exactly. If not in a yeah. shorter time period. Yeah. I, I think I always like say everybody's like, I always like everybody's always asking like, oh, I got a lot of money saved up. What should I do? I'm like, dude, if you're still a barber, you need to start investing in like yourself, of, like how to get up to the next level. Right. Like even if it's like, you know, just fucking like learn how to run a better business so you can like remove yourself eventually and like make even more money. And then you should always just be investing in skills. Like, since I like, since like what, 2017 or 2018, maybe I've always, I've just only put all, like a lot of my money back into like investing in my skill set. Cause like that's, that is going to like help you get further along in life than just like, I don't know, putting money into Tesla right now. Cause like you can, you can like almost 10 X, like what you're going to get like right now from a skill set than what it will do in like, I don't know, a couple years of Tesla having your money just sitting there. Right. I always think that's a better like option. 
people always want to buy a house or like, oh, it's an asset. Dude, you are your biggest asset. You should always keep investing in yourself. And I know you just like even invested in like a, we were talking about like a self-development program too. I'm like, dude, I'm always for that. I think, I mean, I talked to you about this. I have a therapist, right? And, you, and I, I think I mentioned to you on, on the Q&A calls, like, dude, you should get a therapist. And I think everybody should get a therapist. Like, invest into like people that will help you like a skill set develop things like there's nothing wrong with therapy like i love my therapist she's like incredible helps me like think through things and like get through issues and like, it's just a sounding board and i think like you should always as, especially as barbers like man people have a they, they can they can they can make they, a lot of barbers like will will make sense of like investing in like a tool like a barber like a i don't know like a fucking tool of like uh, the newest clipper from Babilis or like the new wall detachables or whatever that may be that like, comes out, right? But like when it comes to education, everyone's like, nah, nah, I already know everything. I'm like, dude, all right. Like you gotta, you gotta be able to like run the business, not just fucking cut some hair, right? Yeah. I, I think that uh, the dope thing about like, so like the investment that I just made recently is like um, what I'm, what I'm starting to see is like, as long as I can pick out that what I'm about to invest in is going to teach me how to fish versus just hand me a fish, yeah. then like I'm learning something valuable because like, especially what, what I'm doing right now, like the, the dude was a therapist yeah, and he, he saw a problem with like people coming like repeatedly to him and using him as a crutch. So he wanted to almost in a way what you're doing. He just wanted to teach people how to like teach the tools so that you don't have to go see him. Yeah, exactly. Like you can self self maintain as yeah. long as you as long as you actually apply the things you're being taught. And it's the same thing here too and Yeah. In, you know, the, I don't, in I, your mentorship program. Because I don't want you fucking cutting hair five years from now, Anthony. Like, fuck. Nobody in the program... I, I think I said this, like... I think I said this on last Q&A call. Or maybe a Q&A call two times ago. Like, I was like, if anybody's still here from this Q&A call five years from now, I'm going to say, what the fuck happened? Like, I'm going to take that as a fucking failure on my end. I'm like, what, what did we go wrong, dude? Why are you still here? You should like, you should already, like, been able to, like, get out of the barber industry and, like, be able to stack your cash up and, like, have a great business after that. And that should always be the mentality. So, um... Yeah, man, Anthony, like, thanks again for coming home, like, again, too, like, I know, what was it, like, fucking going from breaking your business, then going down to, what was it, 45, or where did we go down to after that? Shoot, I went down to 45, and then I had to, I wasn't getting new ones at 45, so I went back down to 30. Jesus, fuck. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. we, 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 we did, we did, we did a long cycle, so we went down to 35, all the way, so you went to 60, then we went down to 35, and then now we're back up to 60 right now, correct? Yes. Awesome. Yep. And then, like, I know we just did that, what, the beginning of this month? Or what was it, like, two weeks ago? How, how long ago was that? It was April 11th. April 11th. That's when I went up to to 60. Cool. Yeah. And then, just yeah. right, and then obviously, like, from there, we'll look to get to 80. And then, obviously, dude, 100 is obviously so, so doable. Like, I think probably by, like, October, September, October, November, if we're in, like, what, May, that should be the perfect time frame. That's, like, more than enough, even if we fuck up a little bit. We should be at 100. So, uh, make sure you keep an eye out for Anthony at the Late Night Barber. Uh, was it L L with the with the number eight? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'll, I'll I'll fucking plug it down somewhere because I'm not going to be able to spill it all the way through. Um, other than that, appreciate you hopping on. This is like a long time coming, also because I always brag about you on the fucking story. So I appreciate you coming on, dude, and, yeah. and uh, looking forward to keep on working with you. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to uh, looking forward to the future. One hundred percent. Oh yeah, brother. Cool. Cool.